Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Eva Shimon from the Civil Liberties Union for Europe, or Liberties in short. Liberties is a Berlin-based EU watchdog organization, and Eva is their senior advocacy officer. She is a human rights lawyer with a special focus on digital rights, including issues related to freedom of expression and data protection. Besides her advocacy work at EU level, Eva also does strategic litigation across EU member states. She has been active in human rights for more than 15 years and was a media lawyer and researcher prior to that. She is also the author of expert studies, book chapters, and articles on privacy and media freedom. Okay, Eva, you know about your challenge. Telling us how to fix an element included or omitted in the Media Freedom Act. Thank you so much for having me. As a general remark, we at Liberty support the draft media regulation, which could strengthen media freedom and pluralism across the EU. However, of course, there is room for improvement among the different topics that could be potentially mentioned. I'd like to talk about transparency of media ownership. I have three reasons to do that. One, Transparency is key to informing the public about possible political or economic interference. Two, transparency helps regulators to prevent media ownership concentration, which can have an undue influence over democratic discussions and the outcome of the elections. And three, lack of media ownership transparency is a problem in many EU countries. The Media Freedom Act in its current form requires only limited transparency, tasking the media services to make the beneficial owners' names publicly accessible. The proposed regulation should be strengthened by including binding rules on transparency to ensure that verifiable information about beneficial ownership is fully and easily accessible. And the law, unfortunately, is also silent about the collection of data sets, the sustainability and the financial background of such a database. So to sum up, the law should require the creation of an EU level database that is accurate, updated in near real time and accessible to the general public. This is the idea we have been discussing since September when the first proposal was published. Uh, and I know already uh, Marius Dragomir also uh, discussed this topic with you in previous podcasts. However, to make things a little bit more complicated, in the meantime, a controversial decision was published by the Court of Justice of the European Union in November 2022. The court in its decision invalidated a provision of the fifth EU anti-money laundering directive that guaranteed the public access to information on companies' real owners. So originally, the directive recognized that public scrutiny is a powerful deterrent to financial crime. But then came the ruling which struck down the relevant article, which required member states to establish and publish databases of company owners publicly available. And that's the important element, the publicly available element. So, just to give you an explanation how powerful these databases were. They have allowed journalists and also members of the public to, to identify owners of shell companies. Among others, former Czech Prime Minister Andrei Babiš ownership was revealed using the law in the Pandora Papers investigation. In our case, uh, of which the ruling uh, was published in November, there was a person called WM, who was called Patrick Hansen by the press, who was also caught up in the Pandora Papers investigation and whose ownership was revealed, argued in front of the court that making his name public violates his privacy and the protection of personal data. So this Mr. Hansen, who is the chief executive of a private jet company, owned a holding company in the British Virgin Islands with activities in Luxembourg, Cyprus, and Russia, and assets valued at more than 3 million US dollars, and also co-owned company registered in Central American tax haven Belize, 
So he is the one who argued for his privacy in relation to access to business ownership data. And unfortunately, the court accepted this reasoning and the ruling states that the law, this original uh, fifth anti-money laundering directive, does not appropriately balance privacy and public access, and that public access was not sufficiently justified in the law. So the ruling still underlines that civil society organizations and the press have legitimate interest in accessing the information on beneficial ownership, but not the general public. And guess what? As an imminent response, Austria, Belgium, Luxembourg and the Netherlands have already shut down access to their registers. So the EU legislators must react to this situation. And here we can turn back to our original question to the European Media Freedom Act uh, and how to fix the problem that there are no EU wide binding rules on media ownership transparency and with this extra obstacle that was created by the court ruling. So first of all, uh, I think we need an EU level database of media ownership. It's not really a question. Access by civil society and journalists is still ensured by the law as the court did not annul that part of the directive. But what does it mean in the practical level? A public official will decide it on record by record cases, on requester by requester basis, or a national lawmaker will define who is a journalist and who can, who can have access to these beneficial ownership databases. And let me add one more thing. So in many cases, when a journalist conducts an, an investigation on certain issues, they want to remain anonymous. So our approach is to ensure that the general public has access to ownership databases. So first and foremost, to answer your question, how to fix this problem, the legislator, EU legislator, should determine the requirement for a publicly available media ownership database involving academia to ensure that data collection and also the proper updates. Second, the legislator should explicitly specify the objective of public interest and I think it is not a complicated legal task because the media helps form public opinion and directly influences the outcome of the elections. By doing so and using the public interest argument, EU legislators could prevent further limiting access to information. And with this solution, we could define a subject matter, namely media ownership, where general access to information is an overriding public interest. And of course, there are many other questions to discuss, such as how data protection is weaponized and misused, and why the Court of Justice is the only supranational court that does not accept third party interventions. But all in all, there is an opportunity now for EU legislators to ensure that public interest prevails in the field of media ownership. But for this, they must take the necessary bold steps to require general access to EU level media ownership database. Thank you, Eva. Um, I, I, I take from your um, uh, fix uh, request that first of all, we can't blame the commission for not having thought of this issue because obviously the CGU's ruling was after they published uh, the European Media Freedom Act, uh, but it is an issue uh, that was created by that decision. I also um, like the fact that you pointed out something I, I, had, I was not aware of, but that makes a lot of sense, which is that journalists do not want to flag that they're inquiring uh, or that they're doing investigative journalism around a certain entity or um, you know, checking ownership of, of, of companies, uh, that it's better when the database is public so that they can do it without raising flags maybe in, in, in the people they're investigating, <laughs> which makes a lot of sense, but I hadn't thought of it. Um, and then also, I think the fact that there is still, we're early in the process of the European Media Freedom Act, so there really is room to fix this issue that popped up uh, only a couple of months uh, ago. So let's hope that policymakers pick up on this. Uh, we know that initial discussions have started in Parliament and in Council and uh, we'll make sure that uh, some of them listen to you. Thank you so much for uh, 
fixing or trying to fix the EMFA and let's hope it happens. Thank you.